Hello, welcome to Wildcard Gaming. This is my gaming channel. Uh, the purpose of this video is to make a tutorial for Dark and Light. Dark and Light is a survival game. Uh, it's basically an ARC mod. Uh, it's a good standalone game on its own, but it has a very steep learning curve, and there are no good guides for this game. So we're going to rectify that today. So first thing I want to tell you, the when you zone in, so there are three races. There's human, dwarf, and elf. Each have their own main faction city, which is the, I'm human. This is the human faction city. Uh, there's no maps per se. The, you can create a map, but that's later on down the go. But there's no, like, you can't press M and a map comes up. Uh, the, really, the only time you get to see the map is when you die and you have to choose your spawn point, which normally you'll choose a spawn point near the city. Okay, so you're going to zone in. One of the very important things I want to tell you is do the quests. This is not a... Uh, this is like Ark. It's a, it's not a straight leveling game. Ark, you get a level, you put a point into health. You put a point in run speed. You put it, which you can't do run speed in this game. Put a point in water, whatever it is. In this game, you get two points, but you can only put one of those in each section, except for stamina. Stamina actually goes in this top section, and these so it's the top five and the bottom four, but you can put one in health and one in water if you wanted to, which you shouldn't do any in water. Uh, one of the important parts about the quests is that some of the quests that you do will give you bonus stats that uh, will be permanent. So it's very important for you to do them. I don't know exactly which ones do that. So I can't, I don't know that I can just show you. And we'll do, we'll do quests like these videos on farming and cooking and all that later like that's that's a little more uh, intricate so instead of ingram system instead of ingram system like you have on arc which you haven't played arc it's just a like a talent tree kind of they have the knowledge section so in each you have a bunch of different sections of, of types of knowledge and you have to level up each time. And different activities level up different things. Now some things, like this is the survival tab, creating some of these survival things will make survival go up. Will we'll give you experience in survival, which will help you unlock these ranks. Let's, let's find something that I don't have unlocked. Uh, riding. I don't have the riding unlocked. So I only have level 5 riding unlocked because my, uh, my brother that I play with has leveled this. Uh, because you need riding to make the saddles. So, like, actually, the, the Banshee, the Nidhogg that I'm riding now, I can't make that saddle yet. I either have to buy it off the vendor or have somebody else make it for me. Anyway, where's my riding? So now I have to redo where I am. Okay, but as you can see, I have a progress bar here, and it says collect hide, craft saddles, or tame creatures. So doing either any of those three activities will give me a progress towards the next rank of this thing everything has it cooking farming uh some of the hunting stuff melee damage which i'm i'm not maxed out on melee damage yet uh, survival ranged you're gonna want to do these things too over time but really these these are really kind of uh their goals to work towards like when you're not doing a quest I want to level my iron work. I want to make an iron building instead of a straw building or a wood building. So I'm going to go collect a bunch of iron because iron, collecting iron, harvest from iron deposits and build iron structures. That's how I level iron works. So I want to build a completely iron building. So I'm going to go find all the iron that I can all over the world. Not a bad strategy. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Go through here and read all of these. I'm not going to go through it. That would take way too long in this short video. Uh, but okay so survival so you come in you just like arc you have food you have water needs food needs you have health needs you have mind needs in this game which you didn't in the other game so early points definitely health tack if you want it uh, i would i would not put any in mana or constitution ever uh, or mana i don't know it depends on your game state gameplay style i use magic quite a bit and i don't i've never put points in mana and you'll get points when you do the, the quest. Okay. Stamina, pretty important. 
just like in Ark, if you're trying to run away from dinosaurs in this game, like if you want to run away from things, you need to have stamina. Uh, which I have several points. I have many, many points in stamina. And obviously I have a ton of points in weight. Weight is super important in this game because you're a survival game and it's mostly a lot of crafting and uh, resource gathering. Water, not important. Do not put points in water. Do not put points in food. Uh, focus is the one that's a little bit different. I'm actually, I bought some herbs that I have to go make some uh, resetting. Because you can reset your talents. So I, have to, I haven't done that yet. Uh, that's why yeah, I actually bought these to reset my talents. Because early game, you might want to put some points into focus. Uh, because focus, it drains a lot. The only way to get focus back is you eat these flowers or create tea from the flowers. Or uh, you sleep. Like you make a sleeping bag and you go to sleep. Uh, which is the easiest way. And that charges it all the way up in like 15 seconds. Uh, probably like 10 seconds. Okay, so that's the points. Uh, you'll do the quest. It'll tell you to create like a stone axe. St uh, a little bit different from this game in Ark. Uh, the pickaxe is what you use to gather stone of all kinds. It doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't... If you use an axe, you'll get less of everything. See? So, use the pickaxe to gather stone. On trees, if you want wood, use the axe. If you want twine, and you might want to come back to this later when you understand what these are, things are for, use the pickaxe for twine or the sword. The sword's not that good for twine. So you see this grass right here? So from the grass, you can get grass, or you can get seeds. The way to do that is with the sword. And you see I got these field flowers, berries, and straw. So you'll use straw a lot in early game, and it's actually a pain in the butt to get. But this is how this is one way you get it. The other way you get it is you see how I'm getting grass here? You would take that grass and you would put the grass on a campfire and then that would dry it out and make straw if you need a bunch of straw. So this is the flower that I was telling you about that you eat to recover your mind. So like, I'm just going to eat them all. You can get berries like that, which you can use for food. Apples. Uh, using an axe on an apple tree is a good way to get apples, which is a good early game food. Uh, creatures. So there are a lot of different creatures in this game. You will learn how to kill them, and there's a campfire. Somebody's random campfire. If you build stuff, take it down. Good grief. Like, here's another freaking campfire. If you build something and you're not going to use it anymore, tear it down. Just common, common courtesy. All right, so, like, here's this level 10 sheep. Levels for creatures don't really make a whole lot of difference. Uh, Health-wise, they do, and they might do marginally more damage. But for the most part, the animals, you do want... If you're taming, which is a whole nother video, you'll want higher levels, uh, as high as as high as you can reasonably manage. Uh, but for sheep, so you kill sheep, uh, you kill it, it gets a little bloody. So to harvest it, you can use the sword to get meat, or you use a knife, which is something you'll learn to create pretty early. You'll use a knife. Oop, I punched it to get hide, which sheep is not going to have very much of anything on it, especially at level 10. So there are hyenas, even in the starting zone, that will group up and, get, and kill you pretty quickly. Uh, I would stay off the beach for a while. Longhorns are passive. Just don't hit them. But like right now, I can see uh, a wolf that would definitely destroy a, a low character. Did I just see a low character? This is a survival game, so like you can hit people or everybody look there's another freaking campfire come on guys yeah bunch of sheep uh meteors that's a uh, uh we can talk about that a little bit so meteors fall from the sky uh, and they have dark creatures on them early game stay away just stay away uh they will aggro with aggro you they have a really huge aggro range if you see a skeleton if you see a reaper and you'll know what these things are uh which reapers like a ghost like a death scythe guy run away like just run back to the town uh, to the guards because the guards can kill them you cannot uh, later in game there'll be dark wind elementals that'll spawn on too which are they i have problems with them still like they're still uh, pretty freaking brutal especially if you get several of them on you but the reason the meteor the purpose for the meteors is because they drop stuff 
So this is a moonstone, which I have no idea what it's for. Stone, which you need. Copper. And uh, the cores, which we, I it despawned. So I actually didn't get to uh, find any of it. Cores are really important, but that's a whole other video, too. Uh, yeah, cores are something you'll you'll gather like mid mid to late game. So as you can see right now, like you can see how I'm kind of struggling in the terrain. That's one of the clunky things. Falling in this game is super clunky. You do you can take fall damage, but you see over there, you can fall off this this hill over here. You see that hill right there behind that house? You can fall off that hill, and if it's sloped just a little bit, you won't take any fall damage. So not too bad. Uh, so one of the first things you want to do is you'll want to see there's another there's another meteor right there. One of the first things you will do following the quest, it'll tell you to build a house. Uh, you'll want to make a house seal because there's a rating in this game. And if you don't have a house seal, people will come in and break your door and steal your stuff. A house seal keeps them from breaking your structures as long as it's within the house seal. And uh, the only way to do that, to break someone's structures when they have a house seal, is to declare war on them. And that's, that's for another video you have to... Play, you have to build a war flag and plant a war flag, which is kind of cool, kind of RP-ish. Okay, we're at 11 minutes. That's probably good. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments, and I'll make more of these videos. I'm going to make more on, like, taming and and uh, some of the, the dungeon clearing and stuff like that. So uh, make sure you subscribe. Uh, I'll be putting out these videos while I'm playing the game. Uh, all right, thanks for watching.